I'm Paul Ridker. I'm a cardiologist at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. And it's a real pleasure to discuss with you the results of our CANTOS trial, the canakinumab anti-inflammatory thrombosis outcome study. For the last 30 years, preventive cardiology has focused on diet, exercise, smoke, and cessation, and then the revolution in lipid lowering. All the information we've had that getting your LDL down further with a statin is incredibly effective for preventing this disease. But during that same 25 years, we've learned a lot about how inflammation, the way your body responds to certain toxins, is also very important for promoting atherosclerosis. 25 years ago, my group found that measuring high sensitivity C-reactive protein could predict who's at high risk for heart attack or stroke, independent of lipid levels. Uh, nearly 20 years ago, we made the observation that the cholesterol-lowering drugs, the statins, are both anti-inflammatory and lipid-lowering. And eight years ago, when we published our Jupiter trial data, we showed that if you had a high level of CRP, you really needed to be considered for statin therapy, even if your LDL cholesterol was already low. That changed the guidelines for preventive care worldwide. But it never answered the fundamental question, which is, if we reduce inflammation without changing LDL cholesterol at all, can we impact on cardiovascular care? So the CANTOS trial is fundamentally an attempt to test the inflammatory hypothesis of atherosclerosis. The drug we use, canakinumab, is a monoclonal antibody that targets interleukin-1 beta. Interleukin-1 beta in turn blocks IL-6, interleukin-6, which in turn reduces CRP production. So it's the IL-1 to IL-6 pathway that we're very interested in. The trial enrolled patients, 10,000 patients around the world, who had a prior myocardial infarction. All of them were very aggressively treated. All were getting high-dose statins already. But they all had a pro-inflammatory response. We define that as, despite being on statins, the HSCRP was still greater than two milligrams per liter. So it's a pro-inflammatory group of patients, what we call residual inflammatory risk very different than the kinds of patients who went in the PCSK9 trials who had residual cholesterol risk. It's a different patient population. We had three doses of the drug, low, medium, and high, against placebo. And the fundamental observation was, without lowering LDL cholesterol at all, but lowering IL-6 and CRP by about 40%, the 150 milligram and the 300 milligram doses, the middle and the high dose, both reduced hard vascular events, MI, stroke, cardiovascular death, by about 15%, and the secondary endpoint, which included unstable angina requiring urgent revascularization, by 17%. And I think most interesting to a vascular biologist, we got a 30% reduction in ever needing angioplasty or bypass surgery. Now, I find that pretty remarkable data because that's the same risk reduction that we saw with PCSK9 inhibitors. But this is the very first inflammation reduction drug ever tested for this hypothesis. So we're very optimistic that maybe down the road, even larger reductions might be found as we learn how to refine this. So the simple part of this discussion is about cardiovascular disease, where we now have clear evidence that reducing inflammation can lower vascular risk with no change in LDL cholesterol. Well, now it gets more interesting and perhaps even more complicated. Like any drug, canakinumab has adverse effects. It's a biologic agent. We expected an increased risk of infection, and we saw that. There's a small but statistically significant increase in fatal infections. So if we consider this kind of therapy, we have to be on the lookout for infection, the same way we would for rheumatoid arthritis patients being treated with a biologic. But all-cause mortality, which actually reduced, non-significantly reduced, but it was down, and it was down to small reductions in cardiovascular mortality. We had other benefits of the drug. We had a reduction in arthritis, in osteoarthritis, and in gout. And most interestingly, we had a reduction in cancer mortality. Well, some people might be surprised to hear that. But in fact, we had an oncology endpoint committee set up at the very beginning of this trial. Remember that patients who smoke cigarettes or uh, breathe in a lot of toxic fumes or are exposed to silica or asbestosis, they have chronic inflammation not in their blood vessels but in their lungs. That inflammation in the lungs has long been known to drive an increased risk of lung cancer, particularly non-small cell adenocarcinomas, the common lung cancers that our smokers get. Well, we knew at the beginning of this trial that we were randomizing patients with heart disease with a high CRP. Well, heart disease patients are very likely to smoke or be past smokers, and CRP is not only a predictor of heart attack and stroke, it's also 
a marker of the inflammation in the lungs predicting lung cancer. The bottom line finds of the trial, after adjudicating all these cancers, was a 50% reduction in all-cause cancer mortality that turned out to be a dose-dependent effect on lung cancer, so that we had a 75% reduction in incident lung cancer and an even greater reduction in incident lung cancer deaths. Now that's remarkable data that reminds us of how important it is to think about the total patient in the biology of atherosclerosis when we treat patients and to understand how inflammation in the lungs is also critical to inflammation in the vessels. Now with regard to the lung cancer finding, first, we consider it exploratory. It's a very powerful effect, it's dose dependent, but first it needs to get replicated. And more importantly, we have to figure out can we exploit this new biology for patients who already have a diagnosis of lung cancer. Our clinical trial, to get in, you had to have a heart attack, a high CRP, and no prior history of cancer. But it's a clinical trial of middle-aged people. So it's an underlying distribution of lung cancers, breast cancers, colon cancers, and we found this large reduction in lung cancer. That doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna work as a therapy for lung cancer, but clearly it's slowing the progression invasiveness and metastases of these very early lung cancers. So now we have quite a challenge in front of us. We need to actually figure out, would this be helpful for the treatment of these lung cancers? But to step back a little bit, Cantos has already taught us, if you've had a prior heart attack and your CRP level remains high, A, you're a very high risk patient. B, we can lower that risk of cardiovascular events by inhibiting, at least with this drug, the inflammatory process, and maybe we can do something useful in terms of cancer risk. The future is gonna be interesting. This is the first time we have real data that inflammation lowering lowers risk. It's a bit like 1994 when the 4S trial for statins first came out. That was the first statin trial. It taught us here's a new way of preventing heart disease. That's where we sit today with this publication.